Great. For our visitors, we have a custom in our parish. At the end of the Mass, we all kneel and silently say three Hail Marys for the next one amongst us to be called home by God. Stations of the Cross followed by Adoration for Lent continues this Friday from 7 till 8 p.m. here at St. Mary's. There is a notice in the bulletin with the remaining times for confession before Easter. Our Mass intention for this Mass is the special intentions of Stephen Broadway. I invite you to take these moments of silence to prepare yourselves to celebrate this most holy Eucharist with the risen Jesus Christ. And God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we gather to give our praise and worship to God, we come mindful of our weaknesses when we have not followed what God asks of us. Let us acknowledge our sin so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not, it will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant. And I had to show myself their master, said the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives to know the Lord. All, from the least to the greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Amen. Response, create a clean heart in me, O God. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, right out, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O Lord. 
A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the parish Passover feast came to Philip, who was from the city in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to you. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise The Lord God said to the prophet Jeremiah, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. God had previously started a covenant with his people, the Israelites. They had been in slavery in Egypt. They cried out to God for help. God responded and set them free from that slavery, led, leading them out across the Red Sea towards the Promised Land. As they journeyed, God offered them a covenant, a covenant that included the law. 
They heard all that God said through Moses. And they said, we have heard this and we will do it. They agreed to follow the covenant. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before they began breaking the covenant. They sinned in disobeying God. The covenant in those days was seen as if you keep the covenant, you will be saved. They didn't keep it. But God still wanted them to be with him. And so he prescribed sacrifices for the forgiveness of their sins. In Jesus, God offers us a new covenant. It is a new covenant, but that doesn't mean it cast off the law of the old covenant. In fact, when Jesus begins his Sermon on the Mount, he says, I have come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And much of Jesus' preaching, his teaching, is about what it means to fulfill the law. A new covenant is established in Jesus, but the law always came from God. The law is what's good for us. We do well to follow it. But in the New Covenant, it's not simply a matter if you keep the commandments, you'll be saved. Our salvation becomes dependent on Jesus, who willingly gives his life for us on the cross. It was not easy for him to go through it all. Before his arrest, he prayed in the garden with prayers and supplications, with loud cries, crying out, and even praying, Father, take this cup away from me, but not my will, but yours be done. Jesus submitted to the Father's will in obedience. And through Jesus' obedience, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. God's law is what's good for us. It will, it's what can help us be on the path to heaven. But even in this world, when we properly understand the law, the commandments, they make life better for us. Keep the commandments. But we know the reality is, at times, we fall short. When we do, we count on God. God who can wipe away our offenses, who can cleanse us of our sins. He can create a clean heart in us <coughs> and renew in us a steadfast spirit. We cannot save ourselves. That is the work of Jesus. But we might ask ourselves, do we want to be saved? Do we want to be saved? It might seem like an odd question. Shouldn't it be obvious we want to be saved? Well, probably everyone wants a place in heaven. But we shouldn't just see it as a free ride. Are we willing to live as God calls us to? Are we willing to change our lives to follow God? And that's where Jesus says, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it can bear much fruit. Are you willing to die to your sinful ways in the past? Are you willing to die to the, world, to the worldly things you enjoy to follow Jesus, to receive the grace of salvation? Yes, our salvation comes from God. We cannot save ourselves. But we should not take the gift of salvation for granted. We show our appreciation for Jesus saving that for us. 
by striving to live like him, to follow what he teaches us. And when we fall short, we count on the Lord's words to the prophet Jeremiah. I will forgive them and remember their sins no more. Does that mean our sins don't matter? No. But it does mean God forgives us. Think of what Jesus said to the woman caught in adultery. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. We need to change. And even to try and change, we can't do it on our own. We need God's help. We need grace. To why we need the Eucharist. We need God's word to guide us. The Eucharist to strengthen us. To follow Him. To trust in Him. To lay it all before Him. Some people seem to think, oh, everyone just gets into heaven. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you can say you believe in Jesus. God does want everyone to be in heaven. That's why Jesus died for us. But we need to try to follow Jesus. We need to turn our hearts to him. To show we desire the gift. That we appreciate the gift. It is Jesus who saves us. Jesus, in his own obedience to the Father's will, becomes the source of eternal salvation for all who obey. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's love for us, we offer these petitions. Good spring planting, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
prayer for all sinners. May we confess our sins to the Lord so that he may create a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishes, that we may find new ways to draw people to Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those on our prayer list, those in our prayer book of requests, for the sick, especially Catherine Decker, to know God's love, comfort, and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died to receive eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special attentions of Stephen Brockway, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions we hold in silence in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, good and loving God, we entrust all our needs to you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, which earth has given, human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affection, they may so be over the things of this passing world, as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Amen. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Lord, we pray upon your people's offering and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood and shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving it to thanks handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant it by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, and may be gathered together into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom till the hour we stand before you, saints among saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Benedict, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then free at last from the wound of corruption 
and made fully into a new creation. We shall sing to his gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. <coughs> Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we we'll always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. <laughs> Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for a blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that, at your prompting, what they desire they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord thy God.